Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I exalt me. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way. Give the Lord a clap of worship this morning. Amen. All right, you may be seated just for a second. I want to say this before we're fixing to go live. Before we go live for the next hour, hour and a half, two hours or how long the service lasts, you are considered pastor staff. So if anything would happen for the next two hours, you're pastor staff. And I do that for, I have a reason, but I, I just want to make you pastor staff. We're glad to go ahead and take us live. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to the House of God Worship Center. What a special day. We're going to have a miracle day, a miracle service day. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. I don't know how to do this, but I, I know you can do this. So I'm not tech. I have people around me that's tech. I'm not. But if you have a special need, already some have let us know. If you have a special need, you need a miracle done in your life, go ahead and be letting us know, text us or email us ever how you do that stuff, and we'll be sure to put their name down. I, listen to me. I want your attention for one second. In my prayers today, this is what the Lord spoke to my heart, and I want to share it with you. One of the worst things that's taking place in America right now is fear. Fear feeds doubt. Amen? It, it, fear is against God. All through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, God says, fear not. And the Lord told me this, and everything he's ever told me has come to pass. I, and I know the voice of God. And that's what he said. 1,000 people will be delivered from fear from this service today. Come on, give God some praise. So if you're out there and you're battling some type of fear, it's going to be gone today. Hallelujah, you have to agree. If you're listening to this and it's three days old and you have fear, it's going to be gone. This is a, a healing power. Hallelujah. Now I want to tell you something. The easiest way to get rid of fear is renew your relationship with Jesus Christ. Thus don't know of Jesus, but know him personally. Can somebody say praise the Lord? I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to ask for the Holy Spirit to have his way in our service this morning. And we're going to ask for the Holy Spirit to just minister through our live streams and, and, and through our DVDs and whatever. Can we just pray right now? Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, and we praise you. Lord, we can do nothing. Lord, I'm not a healer, but you're the healer. Lord, and I know that you said if we just speak your word, God, that you would do this. And Lord, I'm believing right now for a thousand people just to be healed of fear alone. Lord, I believe that the lame will walk. Cancer will fall off this day, Father, because you spoke this into us. Lord, we believe that they're going to be so saved today, restored, God. People's going to renew their relationship with you, God. Lord, what a day of miracles this is. I feel your anointing, God, right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to invite you, even those at home, we want to invite you to worship with us this day. Just don't sit in your chair if you're watching. Stand and let's worship God just a little bit today because God inhabits the praise of his people. And as your worship goes up, you'll see his presence comes down. And where the presence of God is, there's always miracles. Always. Hallelujah. Sister Sheila, will you get the shafar? I, I want to hear her blow that again. This is a sound that we're going to call into worship. This is a sound of war that we've tucked this fear long enough that we're going to win over it. Hallelujah. Go right ahead.
Because the word says I'm healed And I'm free Because he who set me free Says I'm free indeed Oh, I'm not what I used to be I'm not what people say I am Ha! Hey! And I am what God says I am And I'm more than a conqueror Through Jesus Christ Woo! And I am Oh, what God says I am I'm not sick and afflicted I'm healed by Jesus Christ. I'm not bound by addiction. I've been set free by Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm not sick and afflicted. I'm not down and defeated. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
him touch you right now. Yes, he, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves Come on, give him some praise. The Lord's doing something. I feel the anointing he of the Holy Spirit. One more time. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Thank you, Jesus. What an anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Before you sit down, I just want to say this. I just feel this in my spirit. All week long, especially the last two or three days, people have told me that how bad their arthritis is acting up and, and suffering with it so much. And Maybe you're here right now and your arthritis is hurting you. That's why I'm going to cover it right now. You don't need to go through this service in pain. God's going to heal you right now. Jesus said in John, he said, if I set you free, you're free indeed. Amen. He also said in Romans, the eighth chapter, that we are children of God. Is that not what he said? He said, join heirs of Jesus Christ. He even goes further. And then this is what Jesus said. This is rather that addition in your Bible. He said, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give unto His? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess your mind just a little bit. I, I, I'm, it's time that we start thinking a little bit different. Can I say this? I know this is going on there, but I want to say something. A lot of people, especially in America, we have depended on our health care. And we do have some of the best, best health care in the world. But if you notice, it's let us down. Not their fault, but it's let it down. We've had some of the best interns in the whole world, but have you noticed it's letting people down? It's time that we go back to the way the Word says and that we let God heal us. And so here's what I want you to begin to think. The Bible says that you are, Brother Russell taught this, if you want to listen to his teaching this morning, it'll be out on our web. Uh, sometime this week but we are the temple of the Lord the Spirit of God dwells in us amen. can somebody say amen to that amen. can I ask you something do you really believe that if we're children of God and the Spirit of God's in us that that Spirit God won't take that Spirit and drive out any type of arthritis or sickness I just felt that in my own self. I have a little bit. My, God healed my hands, but my back's been hurting. As soon as I said that, I felt the pain go away. There's some people right here. Let God touch you right now. Hallelujah. Say, Holy Spirit, drive out anything that's not like God. Glory to God. What a healer. Come on, give the Lord a clap of worship. You may be seated a minute. I will make a few announcements. Then we're going to have Brother Tom to come. and He's going to minister. Then we're going to get into the... Well, God's already healing. He'll heal all through this. I don't know. We're, we don't have a program here, so I'm not going to say we're going to wait this time or that time. Cause I don't know. But I will tell you this. We're going to see multitudes healed today. Anybody here that's sitting in the congregation come to be healed, would you just raise your hand? I just want to see anybody here come to be healed. I see hands, others, see others. Don't be ashamed. God's going to heal you this day. Those that are out there listening, and I know there's many that have tuned it in just for this, get ready because there's going to be a healing power take place. 
Hallelujah. Man, I feel the anointing. Thank you, Jesus. What a powerful God we serve. I want to make just a few announcements. For the time being, for at least one more week, we're going to stick to our same schedule we've been sticking to. We'll be having services next Sunday. Uh, we opened a building. Well, I, I'm here by probably 8 o'clock, but if you want to come at 8, you're welcome to. But we, brother, we do Brother Russell's uh, teaching early. We, we get it out, film it. And then we start our, our worship service at 11 o'clock. And it, it, these healing services are going to grow. We're going to do another healing service. You say, Pastor, you're going to wear it out. This is not tradition. This is a time America needs healed. So many people are wanting to go back to normal. I got news for you. There is no normal no more. God's wanting some people that are pioneers that let's go to the next level. Let's go to the next level. Something good's about to happen. Hallelujah. Uh, also, this is new to us, and I, I've just mentioned this. In the last, especially the last four or five weeks, since they, uh, people's not had church, people have want to know how they could give to, the, our, to our services and give to our church. And uh, many have mailed. We've had a lot of mail from different states come in. We've had mail from locals. Some have come by and just dropped it in the mailbox out front and whatever but as of this week if i'm not we're sister Lisa right here i'm used to looking that way uh, we have a way that you can give online yes. and uh, i don't know exactly one of them is text it yes. and one of them is just to hit the button and it'll take you there if, if you a lot of people i don't have a debit card i don't even know how to use a debit card every now and then sister becky loans me hers <laughs> and when i go to buy something i have to ask the cashier now how do i use this thing <laughs> And then they always want to know my number, my security number. I said, I don't use a security number. I said, if I had one, I wouldn't give it to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? What good is it if you're giving it to everybody? And so it's always a red tape. And, and I, they got these automatic checkouts. If they mess up, they mess up on me. <laughs> and they say, come in. They'll say, come this way. Yeah, let me show you. I said, well, I got cash. They said, we take cash. But if it'll mess up, it'll mess up on me. But I'm not tech, but there's a way that you can give if you're out there and you would like to give. But we don't do this for the money. We're not begging for money or anything like that. Our God is able to supply every need that we got, and we don't worry about it. But those that have asked, we are making a way for you to do it. Can somebody say praise the Lord? I'm ready for this service to break loose. It's beginning. This is the one of many that's going to happen. I don't know what the future holds. I'm not a prophet this way. I, I wish I could tell you what's about to happen. I will tell you how I feel in my spirit. I don't believe church will ever be the same. I don't believe it ever will. I believe it's changed for life. I do know that there's some states, and this sounds crazy, but I've, you've heard the same thing, that are actually trying to stop churches forever meeting again. And there's some states that find you, like right now, I hate to say this, but I don't care. We could probably be fine here this morning. But you know what? We serve a bigger God than that. He's so much bigger. Yes, that's right. Hallelujah. Feel the anointing. Yes, Lord. And so what we're going to do, what we're going to do is, is I don't know what's about to happen, but I can tell you this. We've got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, Amen. and we've got to know who Jesus is. So we've got to know he's our healer. Yes. The more I read and study Christ, the more I know that we're not seeing the healing that God wants us to take place. I, I can say this because the Lord showed me. When I said earlier there were going to be a thousand people delivered from fear from this, met, from this service this morning, I heard people laugh. I heard it. Can I say this? When God says something, I don't care how many people laugh. God can do it. Well, glory. I just felt this. I, I feel sickness beginning to loose from people. I feel tumors beginning to shake. My God's going to do some miracles this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Before we ask Brother Tom to come, can we stand one more time?
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we do that little song? Touching Jesus, because the Lord keeps speaking to me. We have got to renew a relationship with Christ. Hallelujah. Touching Jesus, His hope that really matters. That really matters. Come on now. His all that really matters. In the name of Jesus right now. Strength. Strength. Be the same. One more time, everybody. Let him touch you right now. Those that's listening, that's waiting to be healed right now. He's moving in your home too. He'll touch you right where you're at. He'll touch you. Give the Lord a good clap of worship. I want to say one other thing, especially to those that will listen to this. If you've been touched today, if you get touched from this, please email us. Let us know if, if your fear is gone, if your arthritis is gone, if your broken leg, your cancer. We, we cherish these testimonies. We cherish them. What a mighty God. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Now, I don't know what Brother Tom's going to minister but I can tell you this much. Something good's about to happen. Hallelujah. Come on, Brother Tom Tabor. Come on. Give him a hand, would you please? I want everybody to stand back up again. And I want you to stand with me, and I want you to pray with me. And this is for everybody that is listening, whether you're in New York, Australia, California, uh, Abram County, Tennessee, Bell County, Kentucky. It doesn't matter where you're at. Father God, forgive us of our sins. And I ask that you just go and put your mighty hand upon the north, the south, the east, and the west, Father God. And in your son's name, we speak to that coronavirus. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask that you just reach out and touch those people who's afflicted with that. We have no fear of it because you are the master of the universe. You, you are for everlasting and everlasting, and we praise your holy name for touching those people that have it and will be healed, Father God. We stand here and we agree that it's gone. It's, it disappears, Father God. We also pray for those people that have other afflictions, Father God. They have arthritis. They have blood pressure problems. They got heart problems. They got cancer problems. In the name of Jesus, 
We believe that you just speak it into existence that it's healed Amen. and it's done. Amen. We have the faith of the centurion, Father God. We ask that you just reach out and touch all the people that is listening, Father God, that they are touched by your Holy Spirit. It's because it's all for you and it's all because of you and all in honor of you. And it has nothing to do with us, but it's all for you. And we thank you for the anointing that you have put here in this place, Father God. It's mighty. And we thank you for your hand, and we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, being here. We thank Jesus for touching us and healing us and dying on the cross for us. And Father God, I pray for those people that do not know you, that we be able to minister to them and to be able to teach them about you, Father God. We ask that you just, just give us the wisdom to speak what we need to speak and do what we need to do. And that we just ask that you just touch us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm wanting to say, or I want to start, and I was going to do... I was actually going to start with something that really didn't have to do with healing, but God pushed me back into another spot. But I want to tell you, the people have been listening, and if you watch the TV, you watch CNN, you watch MSNBC, you watch it, it's gloom and doom. I'm speaking to those networks that it's no longer gloom and doom. I mean, we have a God that is more strong and more powerful than a TV camera Amen. and people saying this is what we have to do and this is what we do. I think we serve God Amen. and God takes care of the rest. Amen. And I, I'm, I'm telling you right now that I speak to that because to me it is an action of the devil. It's not reporting. It's not truth. People being sick is true. But all this other stuff is not true. And I, I'm, I'm wanting the people to know that the fear is not of God. And Satan would want us to be fearful that we can't do anything about anything. And we have to run to the grocery store and buy all the bread and all the toilet paper and all the disinfectant, now they're buying all the power tools. And I'm just telling you right now, what is to become of it? There is nothing to become of it because I'm telling you right now that God is in control. Amen. He's in control. And he's going to touch those people who want to be touched. Amen. One person that needs to be touched, my wife. She's been sick. She's been sick for two years now. And I'm praying that he touches her and her heart and her blood pressure and her, her, uh, all her body. Amen. Whatever's wrong with her, I am praying today, since the pastor has said this is a healing day, Amen. that she is healed. Amen. I speak it, that she isn't healed. That she is healed. Amen. And I was going to say we can continue... Worrying and watching the news and, and, and getting plagued with that. But the opposite of faith is fear. Well, I want to speak some faith to you. Now, I'm also going to tell you that God loves us so much that he will heal us without faith. Now, you've heard that there's been preaching that there has to be faith. You have to have faith. And I, the faith, I think, is an additive to help speak your healing. But I want you to turn to Luke, and I want, I want you to read with me. And the reason it is, God shows me, and I, I have to tell you, the more that I look in his book, the more stupider I think I am. And that's just a fact. We don't learn everything in one time. Amen. And every time I pick that book up, I learn something new. In Luke, in Luke 22, 
And it's in 47, and you're going to say, well, why are you reading the whole thing? I'm going to read the whole thing because I think we need to read the whole thing. Luke, Luke 22, 47. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude that he was called Jesus, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When, when they which were about him saw with what would follow, they said unto him, Let, Lord, shall we might smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. That was Peter cutting off the right ear of the high, the high priest and servant. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer, suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. And then the, Jesus said unto the chief priests and the captains of the temple and the elders which could come to him, Be ye come out as a thief with swords and staves. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretch forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Now, Jesus reached out and touched a man that has not inquired for a healing. And he picked his ear up and put it back on his head after Peter smote it off. The world is that man that got his ear cut off. Jesus is going to reach out and heal these people with coronavirus. We're speaking it because that's the scripture. He's going to reach out and he's going to touch these people that's getting it. He's going to stop it. Because that man did not know who he was except that he was told to go pick somebody up to take him to a court. And Jesus picked up that ear and put that back on him. And he said, Peter, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Jesus didn't want to be associated with bloodshed like that. He was showing what he was all about. He picked up that ear and put it back on that guy's ear and said, here it is. Stop this. Let's let things happen the way that's going to happen. You know, don't you think that Jesus, who sent Peter, and what we had some other people there with Peter, they had been anointed to go cast out devils, heal the sick. They had been anointed. Don't you think that Peter and his little band of men around Jesus could have took those people in the spirit? If you can cast out devils? So they should have been the superior fighting force. But Jesus said, let this happen. He knew what he was doing because he said, let it happen. Now, how does the ear being put back on this man's head that captured Jesus and took Jesus to the crucifixion. What does that have to do with our healing today? God's wanting to heal everybody. It's not intended that it's just for people who believe. It's for everybody. And yes, you know, we can sit here and we can, we can badmouth this and we can badmouth that and, and all that, but we have to preach what he's, what he's intending on doing. And I've watched that in the movies. I've seen it in two different movies. That when he picks up the ear and puts it back on his head, and it never res resonated till the pastor said we was having a healing service today. And it never stuck into me that that was Jesus putting the ear back on the, uh, the entire world. Amen. It means I'm going to heal all of it. It's not intended that any of us suffer or be sick Amen. or die. It wasn't for when the time that Adam was on, put on the planet. We were not destined to do this. Amen. So what I'm trying to tell you right now is the anointing is here for people to be healed. And it is, and it, and it's strong. And he will reach out and touch each and every one of you. Amen. And if you are sick, he's praying for you. There is a family that's up in Virginia next to my sister uh, was the 
the teacher for this, this boy, he died with, uh, he had a cancer in an esophagus, and his family's hurting because he died yesterday. I was going to bring his name before the Lord today in this, and, and he passed away, and he's, he's gone to the Lord. Well, I want you to pray, and now the Lord knows that family. I don't, and I know you don't. And the Lord knows that family. I want you to pray for that family because they're hurt because he's passed away because of cancer. And he was 17, 18 years old. Yes, there's people that go on. There's people that go on and do what they have to do. And, and, and God is going to take them. It's his time and not our time. But there's also that God will allow us to be here. And I think that he will heal us if we ask him. And there's people that he, he, we, he we don't have to ask. God loves us so much, he's going to put the ear back on the, the, the person. And, and Lennox, your PSA is going to come down any bit more. Lennox has got a bad report, which we don't we believe the report of the Lord. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. Last night, I fell in the house and tripped. My left ankle, I thought I hurt it real bad. Hurt my right knee. And I told Karen, I said, it'll be all right. And she said, I'm taking you to the hospital. She tried to get me in to go to the hospital. I said, it'll be all right. Amen. I don't even feel it right now. That tells you the anointing is here. Amen. It's here. It's here. I don't know how much that it would have to take you unless somebody punched you in the mouth to show you it's here. And what I'm trying to tell you is he will do those things. And I've taught, I have told you the things that he's done for me. I've watched him do things. I've watched him raise me up. I've watched him raise people that is in my family. I've watched him raise them up. I don't know what you can put. If you can put him in a box, don't put him in a box. Cut him loose. And I am telling you right now, we are putting him in a box when they think, Oh, gosh, we got to go wash our hands and stand six feet from each other. I'm not making fun of the guidelines, but guess what? God can heal it all. Amen. He can heal it all. And I am telling you right now, I think that we all, if we sat down and we humbled ourselves and we prayed about it, this stuff would go away. It would go away just like it can. It would disappear. You know, it was funny, I was listening to one of the doctors on there saying we were trying to work on a vaccine on, on either SARS or something else that was before this. He, I don't know if it was Ebola or SARS. And he said, by the time we got the vaccine ready, it was gone. Well, guess what? You're looking at the same thing. Amen. Amen. I am telling you right now that God will get to the bottom of this and the truth will be exposed. It's not because somebody was cooking back soup in China. It's because this stuff was loose. And I think God is going to find out. And I think God is going to take, he's going to take his part in it. And I think it's going to happen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your anointing here today. And I thank you for touching each and every one of these people that's here before us. And the people who's watching on TV, Father God, that your anointing is so powerful and strong, I can feel it just running through my bones, Father God. I can feel it touching those people that need it. There's people that has kidney problems, Father God. I speak to those problems that they have in the name of Jesus, that they're healed. I'm speaking to the people that has problems with muscular dystrophy that they, they are healed in the name of Jesus, Father God. I am also speaking to those people who have cancer in all regions of their body, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. You're going to command those cells in rebellion to come into line in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for your anointing right now.
for touching those people that have cleft palate, those people that have bone infirmities, Father God. They got circulatory problems. They got respiratory problems, specifically the coronavirus, Father God. We're speaking to that, that it comes out of their bodies in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask that you just touch each and every one of these people. Then they know, they feel your power upon their body, Father God. And that they know that you exist. We're speaking to those people that don't think you exist, Father God. That they think you're a fable, they think you're a myth. And we know your power is there, and they will feel your power. And we know that you will show your presence to them. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, we will ask for the greatest miracle of all. The people who is not saved, and not, 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 does not know you. After you put that ear back on, Lord, that they be able to come and admit that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and he died on the cross for their sins. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And Lord, I thank you for the anointing that's in this place right now. And I ask that you just go through those TV cameras and to these people that's listening right now, that they are touched mightily. Father God, and we also ask that you pray, we pray that you give wisdom to our leaders that what is supposed to be right, that churches are to meet, Father God, and that they'll be able to go forward with their free exercise of religion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, we speak to those leaders in the wisdom and that you touch them, that they understand that we need to come and see you each and every day that we can come and see you. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this country, that you touch the United States, Father God, that you heal its borders, you heal it in the name of Jesus. We ask that you touch our kids, Father God, that they've been out of school, that nothing will come against them, and that they'll be able to do the things that they need to do in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of being here in front of you. And I thank you for your spirit being here mightily. And then, Lord, I know that you will touch because it's in your way and you will put the ear back on the world. Father God, it's just, uh, just wonderful being here in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask that you just touch those people that have problems with their feet, with their legs, the back, Father God, the shoulders, their arms. I ask that you just touch each and every one of them. Father God, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for doing what you have done. I thank you for just touching each and every one of us. And we ask you that you touch our hearts, Father God, and change us. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray over this church because I know that there is a reasoning that you're doing what you're doing. I pray over the pastor, Bill Chapman, and his, and his wife, Becky. I ask that you put an anointing on them, Father God that will just shake them through their bones and through their bodies, that, that they know what they're supposed to do in this church, Father God. I ask that you just touch them mightily and upon their daughter, Lisa. I ask that you touch each and every member of this church, Father God, so they can get ready for what you're about to do. Father God, we thank you for the anointing that you placed on my wife, and on my grandkids, Father God, that you just touch them mightily and that they understand what is going on and that they see what's going on. Father God, I ask that you just touch the, the teachers and preachers in this church, that your anointing be strong upon them and be ready for what's getting ready to happen. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your anointing in this place.
If there's anybody here that wants to be prayed for, right now's the time. That wants to come forward here. We're all staff. I know that there's, everybody's probably saved. But if there's anybody that needs to be prayed for, you may come forward. And if there's not, I'm going to pray for the people that's out there. There's somebody that's got an upper respiratory ailment that has been coughing and hacking. You've been tested for COVID, thinking that you got COVID-19, and they said you didn't. You got other problems. God is healing you right now. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody else out there that thinks that they got HIV. They got some type of uh, immune deficiency in their body. And they thought they had COVID too. God is touching that person right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There is people that, that have muscular dystrophy that lives here in this county. He is reaching out and touching them right now. To be made whole from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. There is somebody that's in here right now that is having problems with a hip on the right side. And it has been catching or been feeling like it's been grinding. God is healing that right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Karen, come up here. Pastor, I want you to come up here. And Pastor's wife, I want you to come up here. Hallelujah. I want you to stand right there. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for my wife from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Father God, that you just say it and she's healed from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And that is from anything that has to do with anything, Father God, with her health. In the name of Jesus, Father God. We know that you say it and you speak it and it shall be done. Yes, Lord. Father God, I know that the, 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 the doctors have looked at her, and then they say there's nothing wrong with her. Then they say there's something wrong with her. Lord, you are the you know what's going on with her. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 There's a shoulder bothering this lady right here. I want you to reach your, push your right hand out here toward this lady. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I'm praying for this lady's right shoulder right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever's wrong with it, we ask you, Lord, to touch her. Jesus. In Jesus' name. We release it. Release it in the name of Jesus that it's healed. Hallelujah. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Raise that arm. Is how high can you raise it? Is it better than it was? Raise it one more time. Praise the Lord. I need you to stand with me right now. Stay right here, Brother Tom and Sister Karen. And Sister we're we're going to pray right now. This is what God showed me about this uh, the virus. It lives on fear. Without fear, there'd be no virus. God showed me this, and, and I'm sharing this. And one of the reasons that we're going to rebuke fear today is because that kills the virus. Church, our country's got to get back to, to work. Our people has got to get back to what they do. And so what we're going to do right now is I want to, we've got to get rid of fear. And God told me at least 1,000. 1,000 is going to be healed of fear. And I'm going to tell you something. There's churches all over the United States doing the same thing. We're not the only one getting rid of fear today. 
There's people that's praying right now because this has to end and it's going to end today. The beginning. And so in order to get rid of fear, this is what you have to understand is that you are a child of God. Now, now let me tell you, some of you, you say, well, Pastor, I, I'm not a Christian yet. Brother Tom doesn't address that. God still made you. Did you hear me? God still made you. And God's going to let the fear leave you right now. And here's why. Because I want every one of us that know we're going to recognize who God is right now. Can you say God is bigger than any virus? God is bigger than cancer. God is bigger than anything the enemy can do. The only thing that God cannot do with us is get rid of our fear because we have to get rid of it. Can I preach a bit? Just I'm not preaching. Up. You say, but Brother Bill, you just said we're, God's going to heal. I'm telling you how to get rid of fear. I'm telling you how to get rid of that. That's getting rid of it. That's a healing. And so it, it, here's what you have to do. You have to say to yourself, my God is bigger than anything the enemy can put in my way. My God's bigger. I will not fear. Though I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because my God is able. both of us on the same page brother can I speak just a second the church of the self righteous they only want to pray for the righteous my God died for everybody and I'm going to tell you something this may shock a lot of theologists but God will not do one more thing to heal it's already been done 2,000 years ago it's completed So we pray to come into agreement with God. Woo! We've got a list of people that's called in. This is someone with dementia? Yes, uh, Cynthia's friend. Dementia. Well, Tom, do you believe God can restore the mind? Yes. How about you, Sister Karen? Right now. How many else believe it? It's paid for 2,000 years ago. We're just going to own it right now. Somebody says it cannot happen. I've seen people healed of dementia. I've seen them. I heard a preacher preach one time that had been healed of dementia. God restored them. Don't tell me my God's not bigger than dementia. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we restore thee right now. Hallelujah. Just a minute, hold on. Sister Karen, the Lord just spoke to me, and he told me what the problem is. You have a nerve disorder, and they have never found it. And God says, I'm the only one that can restore the nerves. Somebody touch her back. I want somebody to touch her to the top of her head, to the soles of her feet. Every nerve be restored right now in Jesus' name. Every nerve. Turn it 
right here's a special need this this sister I don't know if she's ever been to this church but she does watch us every week and she supports us with her tithes and offerings and her prayers and she has an unspoken request hallelujah sister Leomi I want you to step here for a second because you had a special need for some friend God's gonna heal them. this woman right here I want you to believe I don't know what her you see we don't have to know your request so, how many believes God's gonna move right now hallelujah in the name of Jesus shake this place God right now let her feel the touch from on high. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Oh, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Oh, God, God said he would turn it around. Oh, God said, God said he would turn it around. It was a devil meant for evil. God's going to make it. Stand up here, Mama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love it because you come to all of our healing services. You try to. You do. Can I tell you something? Sing it. Just give me that chorus one more time. Listen to this. God said he, he would turn it around. God said, God God said he would turn it around. If you're going to have a healing service, you got to believe in miracles. One of our other healing services, this, this woman got healed. But I'm going to tell you what God just showed me about her. He said, I'm the restorer. You're going to begin to feel younger. That make you smile, won't it? You already feeling it. Raise that hand and say, I'm going to be young. Say it again. I'm going to be young. With glory. You just watch and see. The joints are going to begin to move. You're going to begin to do things you've never done in years. Because when God says, I will restore, God is a restorer. Hold that camera right over here. This is Sister Shirley. She shouldn't be here today. She's very sick. She's in pain. But yet she says, I'm going to the house of God. There's Jesse, he's very faithful to bring her. Can I say, I'm going to say this. I always pray for Sister Sherry. I pray for her daily. But I'm going to speak something into her life as a man of God. I'm going to speak from this moment forward. Touch her back right there. You see how crooked it is? Can you get that in just a little bit? It's going to be straight in the name of Jesus. There it is. Speak it. It was done. Well, glory. Somebody give God some praise. He would turn it around. Oh, God said he would turn it around. It was the devil meant for evil. God's going to make it good. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Is this in your stepdad? Yes. You got press for your stepdad. All right. It says here that he's on Oscar. <laughs> That's it. One of our one of our founders here at the church, one of our first members. I was with him when the doctor told him. I sat right there and he sat down. The doctor said, "You got five tumors in one lung, and your and your other lung is one big tumor." said you'll be on oxygen for the rest of your life said if you take treatments you got about three to four weeks if you don't take no treatments you got about two weeks to live and he said either way I'll just give you all the medicine you want you'll feel no pain he looked over at me and I looked at him and he said well doc I got to get a second opinion and the doctor said well you're welcome to do that but I know what I'm talking about he said you don't understand I'm going to Dr. Jesus and he said I refuse to have oxygen he said, Brother Bill, I will not walk in church with oxygen. He said, I don't want it. The doctor ordered it. He said, no. He said, I don't want none of your pain pills. I was back three months later sitting at the same desk in front of the same doctor, and he put the, the, the x-rays and stuff on that screen, and they, all five tumors were gone. 
the big tumor was about that size. He lived about four or five more years. He's an elderly man and never was on oxygen over that. Can somebody give God praise? If God can do it for one, why can't he do it for this one? Brother Tom preached this morning. It doesn't matter. I don't even know if he's a Christian or not. It doesn't matter. Because God's going to heal him. I'm going to put an ear, not an ear. He's putting the lungs back in here. Give God some praise. In the name of Jesus, we agree with the word of God that God has already done this and breathing is now. Oh, God said he would turn. I think Brother Tom done prayed for this person, but we're going to pray again. We're going to agree again. And if you're here and you're listening, call me. And if you got them or mail or what you do. Here's somebody that has a real weakness in their legs and fatigue. And they can't, they can't hardly barely walk. Guess what's going to happen? I don't know who you are, but where you're at, but stand up right now. Stand up. Somebody helping you stand up right now. Hallelujah. I want you to look over to the person just tap you up and said, you'll not have to help me up no more. My God is a healer. Brother Tom done prayed it. We're agreeing with it. And let it be right now. We want to hear your testimony. God said. Sister Leomi, what was your need this morning? Your friend. Johnny's going to be restored. Go ahead. Brother Tom. Everybody stand and put your right hand toward this lady. And we're praying over this prayer cloth. This prayer cloth is going to him. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that you are more powerful than anything on this planet. In the universe, Father God, that you just speak to his issues with his stroke, Father God, and that he is completely healed. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in his body Jesus. is put back the way he was when Hallelujah. he was born, and he was strengthened. Yes, Lord. In your might and in your spirit, Father God, we thank you right now. In Jesus. For the anointing that you have put Lord upon this life. We pray that you just touch him. And his family, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. 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 I was saying this. God showed me this for two days, so I'm going to share it with you. I see somebody, and it may be more than one person, but you have a cancer or a tumor or something that's on your head. It's right here on your side. I guess this would be your right side. I see it. And I, I, I see it. Every time God shows me to it, it's moving. And right while it's moving, you're wondering what's going on, and it falls off. I mean, it just disappears. And you say, Pastor, has that ever happened? I've seen it multitudes of times. Because here's what happens. When the Spirit of God begins to move, it can't, it can't grab a hold of it, so it falls off. It's going to happen right now. We want to hear the testimony of this. It's important for you, and it helps us. Right now, in the name of Jesus, this cancer, there it is. It's already shaking. I can see it again. It's moving. It's moving. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid right now. 
Just say in the name of Jesus. There it is. It's gone. Now throw that nasty thing away. Come on. Hallelujah. With glory. I tell you, for God doing miracles, you say, Pastor, some of them we don't see, some of them we see. Heard you say, how do you know God doesn't? Because I'm going to tell you something. God told me to speak the word and he'd do the rest. I don't heal. God does. Amen. And if he, can't, if he can't do it, then we got the wrong God. But I know he can. Mom. Mom. I feel this. Give me just a little volume and number. Praise the Lord. There you go. Praise the Lord. Down just a little bit. There. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Who? Yes. We're going to pray for my brother-in-law. And... Uh, Tom's got one right there. We got this prayer call. My, brother, my brother-in-law has major back problems and pain that they can't do nothing with. They, they've tried everything. It's just he's just in misery. Marcus, I, I know you watch this. I'm going to tell you something. From this moment, it's what at, at it's 12:25. At 12:25 on the 26th, you're going to feel the healing power of God. When this prayer cloth gets to you and it touches you and you touch it, you're going to feel the anointing power of God move. And you're going to go back to this time because it begins right now. Hallelujah. I speak healing right now. I come to agreement. Every nerve be joined. Every nerve be just joined like it should and pain begin to go away. I'm going to ask you something, Marcus. I want you to do something you can't do. Bend over. Move it. And I want you to say, thank you, Jesus, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Come on now. Get, let's, let's have some service here. This morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm fixing to. I'm fixing to release something into those that want this. This is what God keeps showing me over and over. These healing services and miracles have to leave the church. They have to leave the church. Now, it don't mean we're not going to have them. It means that God has wants you to do the work. When, when you go back to work, God's going to say, I want you to be on the job for me. When you go back to school, go back to classes, ever what, ever what your routine is, when you go back, when Brother Tom goes in the courtroom or whatever, wherever he goes, things are going to change because I'm going to release an anointing of a fire that you cannot be quiet with. Pastor, how do you do that? I am the pastor, and as the pastor, there are certain things that we are allowed to do. God says, do it, I do it. Yes, We're going to release it right now. Yes, Glory to God. How many wants it? Because if you don't want it, it won't come. He won't come, I should say. If you want it, you will receive it. Raise your hand down and say, Lord, I want it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost and fire rest upon each one. We can never go back to a routine. We can never go back to what it is. God, we're going to follow your spirit right now. We are going to be the Peters and the Johns. We're going to be the Marks and the Lukes, Lord. We're going to be the Apostle Pauls. And I want everybody here to say, God, you can count on me. I'm in ready for this moment. Are you ready? Are you ready, Jesse? Say it loud. I'm ready. Are you ready, darling? Are you ready, Karen? Yes. You got to say it out loud. Are you ready up there, drummer? Hallelujah. Now, there have been several people of request, and I'm so glad Brother Tom ministered what he did because some of them are not Christians, and they've really been a lot of pain. They don't understand healing. They don't even, they don't even understand God. Be truthful about it. They don't understand this. Go ahead. You got what? Okay, we'll get right to it. Let me see. You got one too, sis? Okay. Just stand right. Okay. This is my mama because her sister um, is sick. Amen. We'll pray for Mamma's sister. Everybody right now. Lord, I want you to touch my mom's sister right now. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, in the name of Jesus right now, touch her, Father, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. See, there's a Holy Ghost and fire. I'm going to get to yours in just a second. There's a Holy Ghost and fire leaving. We, we, sometimes we in our haste and, and to try to streamline this, the power of God and do things and fit God into our pocket, sometimes we skip over things. We know it's there and we believe it, but we just skip over it. When Jesus was baptized of John, there was a voice that said this. There's one, John said this. There's one coming after me that shall baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost and fire. We kind of skip over the fire. And sometimes it's because we don't understand things. But can I tell you what fire does? Fire is what keeps you moving. Just won't let you rest. It just won't. You have to, it makes you have to go, the have to. They used to sing a song years ago in church, you, you got to have the have to. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. And for everybody that raised your hand, there's going to be a burning. Because I believe what God told me. I want you to let that burning begin right now in your inner soul. Begin to worship the Lord right now. Hallelujah. 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 I hear people all over this that's listening to this, their fear is leaving them. For the first time, they're seeing God for who He is. They're not paying no attention to what the TV's saying. They're not paying no attention to what everybody else is saying. They just understand what God's saying. I'm going to tell you something. God, God gave me this about four weeks ago, and this has been part of my strength, so I'm going to say it. A lot of people today are saying we got to have common sense. we got to have common sense. we got to have common sense. Now, I believe in common sense to an extent. If I'm crossing the road out here, I'm going to wait till the road is clear. That's common sense. But common sense and faith does it never work together? Faith is the opposite of common sense. I can take you all the way back from the Bible, go through every book of the Bible, and I can never find where common sense and faith are together. And so here's what I want to tell you something. I want you to rebuke this fear out of faith and not common sense. Do you hear me? I want you to speak to your sickness out of faith and not out of common sense. Common sense, if your arm hurts, it hurts or something wrong. Faith is, no matter what it's doing, it's healed. That's, good. That's the difference. And so we're going to jump out of the boat. I'm going to tell you, that that's dumb. The, the jump out of a sound boat into a, 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 a sea that's a storm is not too bright. That's not common sense. I'll go one more. How many remembers the story of Apostle Paul when he was a prisoner on his way to Rome? And the boat was, had been in a storm for 14 days, and the boat was about ready to sink. And Paul stood up and said, fear not. Not one of you going to die. But then here's what he said. He said, the boat's going to sink, and you got to stay on the boat. Now, that's not common sense. Common sense was let me in the lifeboat and get me over the land. But Paul says, cut the lifeboats loose. We're going to cut some lifeboats loose right here. Man. Come on, obey the Lord. Somebody that just needs a spiritual touch. Before I pray for this on this common sense, God just wants to give you a spiritual encouraging word right now. And I'm going to tell you, if you'll just receive it. You're right here. If you'll just receive it, things are changing. Come on, obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. We're going to step out now. Hallelujah. I want you to, in your mind, I want you to stand up on the side of the boat. The waves are shaking, the boat's rocking. And common sense says run for safety. And Jesus said, come on out. Well, glory. <laughs> Sister Karen, the doctors may not know, but God knows exactly, and he's already beginning to move right now in Jesus' name. 
You're going to step out. Take a deep breath. Relax just a minute. Now here, I want you to just jump out of this boat. You're going to sink a little bit because that's the enemy saying you're foolish. But I want you to know this. Even if you're going under for the third time, raise up your hand and say, Jesus, and he's going to pull you back up. I don't care if, if, the, if you're sick in the hospital right now. I don't care if you're well at home. It doesn't matter where you're at. God's saying, I want to touch you right now. Well, glory. I feel the touch of the Holy Spirit. Never stop working. You 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 never stop
stop, you never stop working. And even when I can see it, you're working. And even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I can see it, you're working. And even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap of worship. Let the anointing flow. And the anointing breaks all bonds. Breaks the yoke. I am. Uh, Church, right now, right now, and I felt this in my spirit, but right now, there is a mother right now. You are at the end of your rope, and what I'm speaking to is a matter of life and death. I'm telling you that this mother has prayed over her children, and she feels like it's the last prayer she can pray. She's almost ready to give up. Her children are addicted to drugs, and the Lord's telling me to tell you right now that today he has heard your cry. Today he has heard your cry. Do not give up. Just because it doesn't look like he's working, he is there, and he is working on your behalf. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every addiction in the name of Jesus. And I command that addiction to be broken under the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. Under the power and the authority of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Right now I speak to addiction in Claiborne County and I command it to be stopped. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And right now there's a young man and you hear this, you're listening to this, and it just irritates you. You're just irritated that you have to hear this, that you have to see this. But I'm telling you right now that the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is reaching through the airways and He is touching you right now in the name of Jesus. There is a woman out there right now. I can't even say your name, but I, I don't, I'm not supposed to say your name. But you have lost your children. You have lost hope. You have lost everything you thought was important to you. But still you're pursuing the wrong road. And the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you, turn right now. Wherever you're at, I don't care what you're doing right now, you turn right now. The Holy Spirit's getting ready to touch you. And there may be a battle. There may be a struggle. There may be something going on that you don't understand. But the Lord is telling me to tell you He is going to be in your corner. Everything will be restored to you in the name of Jesus. And He is telling me to tell you don't give up. Don't give up. You will be restored in the name of Jesus. And if you have nowhere to go to church, come here. We will love on you. We will hug you. We will encourage you. And we will never judge you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you don't think that God's moving, I want to tell you something. I was just getting ready to pray for people with addictions. This is, I want to say this. This kind of irritates me. Some things just irritate me. They closed churches, but they left every liquor store in America open. I heard one guy say it this way. He said, well, if we closed them, they'd be all murders. But you know what we have right now? We have an addiction in America because people have sat for the last two or three weeks and drunk and done their drugs and whatever. They're addicted. It's not their fault. I'm not blaming them. But I want them to know there's hope. They don't have to continue in that lifestyle. Is that right, Brother Jesse? No matter how poor, God can bring you back. Hallelujah.
Kula basi tabasa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anybody that we miss that needs prayer that's here, come. Anybody. Hallelujah. Sister Shirley, that request that you have, we're going to pray over it right now. You said you had another request right now. In the name of Jesus, God, speak to her. Father, move upon this need right now. In Jesus' name. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I ask that you just touch this man and give him strength and what he's about to do.
I say to this people this day, yea, I say to thee, think it not strange. But I say to thee, trust my word. See that my word has not been spoken. I say to thee today, trust in my word. Know what my word saith. And I say to thee, have I not spoken to you by my people today? Yea, have I not chosen the things that was said? And I say to thee this day, whatsoever I saith, yea, will I not do? I say to thee, yea, I've done many miracles this day. But I say to thee, give me praise. Give him praise. Give me praise. I say to thee this day, this is the first of many things. Hear me today. Yea, things have changed. The seasons are moving. And I say to thee, have I not get awoken the world to who I am? Have I not spoken in every country? Have I not seen my name? Have I not knelt and begin to cry unto me? I say unto thee, I need people that will go forth and take my word. Yea, I say to thee, I need people that will proclaim my word and stand upon my word. I say to thee, if you will speak my word, yea, will I not do it? Yea, will I not do it? I say to thee today, receive what I have given you and give me praise and see that it will not be. Can we just give God, raise our hands over this building one more time. Give God some praise. It's not by man. It wasn't by Brother Tom. It wasn't by Pastor Bill. It wasn't by Sister Karen. It wasn't by Sister Becky. It was by the Holy Spirit this morning. It was the Holy Spirit that spoke. It was the Holy Spirit that touched you. You that are going to watch this and are watching it. You've been touched not by this church, but you've been touched by the Holy Spirit. Understand that God is everywhere right now. He's right there with you right now. In Jesus' name. Yea, I say to thee, see that I have not opened eyes. Oh, have I not opened ears? Yea, I say to thee, have I not healed the brokenhearted? Have I not cast fear away? You are a new creature and all things have become new. You are a new creature and all things have become new. Hallelujah. Yea, did I not say I would give you a sound mind? Hallelujah. Somebody give God some praise in this place. Amen. Can we give Brother Tom a good, give him a hand for the awesome word. Amen. Now, we're not going to dismiss this service. I, I could never dismiss one of them. But I will tell you this. If you want to stay and worship the rest of the day, you can. If you need to go, you can do it. But we're not going to, we don't end these. Yes, Lord. I tell you, I appreciate those that yins have obeyed God so tremendously. Obedience, obedience. Uh, as we, if you have to leave, if you have an offering you want to give, you can come up. We're not going to lift an offering this morning. We're not about offerings here. We have to have money as every church, but I think sometimes we let things interfere with it. And so that's what I say about you that's watching. You can give, but we're not asking you to give. We're not begging you to give. If you feel, only if you want to, do you give. And hallelujah, that the blessings of God will be upon you. Give the Lord another hand. As, as we're, I, this is going to be a surprise right here. Uh, as we dismiss, Sister uh, Mary Ann's going to sing a song. I heard her sing. She said, oh, no. I catch, I heard her, I heard her sing it. Get that microphone and sing that song. Uh-oh, she ain't got the words. Anyone, anyone. Amen. Got on the phone. Sister, she was playing, learning to play the piano and singing yesterday, and I heard her. And I thought, that would be just an awesome way right now. Just an awesome way. Hallelujah. Just praise the Lord. What do I do? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I, am I putting you on the spot too much? Okay. I do that. I just have. I get in the spirit of it. Amen.
I wonder and hear the bird sing sweetly in the tree. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior. is doing is he and I think that we're one of the frontier churches so I'm very proud of this is God is setting the stage for his move that's going to shake the, this and we're, we're going to be a forerunner in it we have prayed we've sought God and this is not new to us we've been at this a few years God's getting us ready we're going to see it we're going to be a part I've, I've been talking to God for two or three weeks on this at one time I didn't know where we stood and God says you're going to be there we're going to be there and so he's getting us ready. So I don't know what's going to happen next Sunday. I, I can't wait till this stuff lifts and we can just have real service. But we are having real service. <laughs> and, and so come next Sunday and uh, let's bring someone. If you don't care, bring someone that's, not, that's never been to church, somebody that needs healed. I don't, somebody just needs blessed. That's what the house of God's for. It, it's a place to minister to. Amen. Amen. We love you. And we... You no longer are my staff. <laughs> I fire everyone. No. <laughs> I love you so much. I, you don't know how much I appreciate it. Last Sunday when I walked in here and I seen all the people that's here, you don't know what that meant to me. Never. You'll never know how much that meant to me. And this Sunday too. Brother Tom, give him another hand. What an awesome word. <laughs> Amen. Who? Amen. We're glad to have our visitors. Amen. Give them a hand. Awesome. I, I hope...
I hope we didn't scare you too bad, but we get wild around here. This is nothing. We get wilder. <laughs> but that's who we are, man. We don't put on no, that's who we is. Anybody else got a word? Shake hands and smile and be sure to shake hands with our visitors. God bless. Awesome word, man.